The entire theory of evolution is based on false extrapolation. And here's what I mean by this. An observation is made within a limited range of testing, and then conclusions are extended beyond that range of testing. And here's how this is applied to evolution. If I can demonstrate that a random mutation can result in a survival advantage, like antibiotic resistance in bacteria, then I've just proven the mechanism of evolution, and therefore I can conclude that all life shares common descent through evolution. Now allow me to explain why this type of extrapolation is fallacious. For example, I'm going to demonstrate that a single engine aircraft can orbit the Earth, and here's the proof. A single engine aircraft can ascend to an altitude of a mile with one and a half gallons of fuel. Therefore, if I carry 93 gallons of fuel, I can achieve an altitude of 62 miles, which will put me into orbit. Of course, anyone with a scientific mind immediately understands that this kind of logic is laughable. Conditions at higher altitudes are different from those at lower altitudes. The higher a plane ascends, the thinner the air becomes, making it increasingly difficult to go higher. So the statement that a plane equipped with 93 gallons of fuel could fly into orbit is a false statement because all you've done is measured a parameter of one mile and then extended that to 62 miles by simple multiplication. And you haven't done any testing to see if your conjecture holds. Now, even a child in elementary school understands the fallacy of this logic. Yet this is the identical kind of logic used in university classrooms to teach evolutionary biology. For example, we know that natural selection favored the survival of dark moths over light moths during the Industrial Revolution. Therefore, we know that evolution is true. Therefore, we know how humans evolved from apes through millions of mutations over millions of years. Now, returning to the analogy of the airplane, conditions are not the same with higher altitudes because the air is thinner. Now, I'm using this analogy because evolutionists fail to realize that one mutation in a lineage is mathematically possible. However, multiple mutations involving functionally integrated systems are not mathematically possible. Now, in utilizing the argument from extrapolation, the first fallacy is misrepresentation of what evolution is. It's thought that if you simply define evolution in a certain way, that the process which you describe can simplistically be applied to all biologic systems. Now, here's a typical definition of evolution that you'll hear, published in Wikipedia. Evolution is genetic change over time. And here's how we know this to be true. Most species produce more offspring than can survive. Traits vary from one individual to the next. Different traits confer different rates of survival. And traits can be passed from one generation to the next. Now, the first statement, evolution is genetic change over time. This is a false definition of evolution. My children are genetically different from me. So one generation of sexual reproductions is genetic change over time, but it is not evolution. Now look at the evidence they present for evolution. None of these observations are new. All of these phenomena had been known for hundreds of years before Darwin was born. So what's being done is misrepresenting what evolution is and then extending it to all the unknowns of nature. Here's an example that's become a poster child of evolution the Lenski experiment. Richard Lenski conducted an experiment for over 30 years involving the culturing of thousands of generations of E. coli bacteria. And it's argued that this proves that evolution can create new traits. Therefore, we know that evolution can account for all the complexities of nature. And here are the results that supposedly prove evolution. After 31,500 generations, a strain emerged that could metabolize citrate while the parent colony couldn't. Now, believe it or not, this is one of the most repeated evidences presented for the contention that evolution has been observed in the lab. And let's see if this can logically be extrapolated to the greater claims of evolution. Let's look at human evolution. It's commonly argued that the difference in DNA between a human and a chimpanzee is 1% to 2%. Now, this is a gross understatement, but I'm going to throw every advantage on the side of evolution and demonstrate that human evolution is still impossible by referencing this experiment with E. coli bacteria. 
A 1 to 2 percent difference means that humans differ from chimpanzees by 31 million to 62 million nucleotides. And since humans and chimpanzees are claimed to have descended from a common ancestor, which is Australopithecus, it's believed that the genome of Australopithecus differed from the human genome by significantly more than between humans and chimpanzees. But just to keep this simple, I'm going to make the very generous assumption that only 31 million nucleotides, that's just 1%, this is the number of genetic code substitutions that needed to be changed to go from Australopithecus to humans. Now, the entire evolutionary period from Australopithecus to humans would have required less than 300,000 generations. Now, in 31,000 generations of bacteria, at most, 10,000 nucleotide substitutions occurred to result in a strain that could metabolize citrate. In the evolution of Australopithecus to humans, at least 31 million substitutions would have occurred. So if you give evolution every benefit of the doubt, the Lenski experiment demonstrates that evolution to Australopithecus appears impossible. Now I'm going to give you another problem that you might not have thought about. Bacteria reproduce asexually. This means that every time a mutation appears, it's repeated in the offspring. In the supposed evolution of sexually reproducing species, random mating occurs, and the chance of a favorable mutation becoming fixed in the population is only about one chance in 500. And here's another problem. The mutation rate in bacteria is much higher than that of humans. So if you apply the Lenski experiment to higher organisms, you're going to need even more generations to create any favorable mutations. And here's another problem. In the Lenski experiment, trillions of trillions of bacteria were cultured, resulting in one new trait after 31,500 generations. In human evolution, only about 10,000 individuals were supposedly reproducing. So in an evolving human population, far more generations would have been needed to result in the same number of mutations. And here's a final problem. In the Lenski experiment, it's believed that the ability to metabolize citrate already existed in the parent population. The two or three mutations that did occur, and these involved less than 10,000 nucleotide substitutions, these mutations resulted in flipping a switch to deregulate an already existing citrate utilization system. So this means that when critically analyzed, it can't even be claimed that a single new trait was created. That trait was already there. So to summarize, the Lenski experiment, and this is one of the most celebrated examples of how evolution is observed in the lab. This is a classic example of false extrapolation utilized to justify evolution. If you look at how many generations it took to create one new trait, you should conclude that this doesn't remotely suggest that humans could evolve from apes in the same number of generations. Now be forewarned, evolutionary biologists might tell you that I'm comparing apples to oranges that the transition from Australopithecus to Homo sapiens spanned millions of years and involved numerous genetic changes, including not just specific mutations, but also alteration in gene regulation, genetic recombination, and other factors that contribute to the complex evolution of human traits. These are smoke screens. The Lenski experiment is referenced in the attempt to prove the fantastic claims of evolution. In reality, it should be used as evidence against evolution. Now, again, the entire theory of evolution is based on these types of false extrapolations. This is done because there is no scientific evidence to suggest the evolution of species. The theory of evolution is based entirely on wishful thinking. And this is utilized to justify a worldview of materialism using a mask of science. Thank you again for listening. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel.